This is a 2024 Tesla Cybertruck, and this one is a little bit special because this one is mine. I didn't rent this from Turo. I didn't borrow it from one of my subscribers. I took delivery of this truck last night, and I'm also the very first person in Las Vegas to take delivery. That's not a Tesla employee. So we're gonna just do a kind of a quick walk around, show you some of the crazy features of this very long and anticipated wait, uh, this four plus year wait for my Cybertruck. And I'm also gonna go over just some things to look for when you take delivery of yours, hopefully within the, the near future. So let's get started. Starting with the exterior. Yes, this is made completely of stainless steel. And not only is it made of stainless steel, but it's also bulletproof. It has been tested to withstand up to 45 caliber rounds. So that's overall pretty impressive. Uh, we finally do have an automated or power front, assuming that I can find it. There it is. Just press the button there. And so it does have quite a bit of room. We're sort of rocking the scooter. You do see this nice uh, Cybertruck engraving right here as well. And so just to close it, just simply just got to press on the button here and it does close automatically. So good on you, Tesla, for finally including a powered frunk. So it got this nice big light bar across the front. But believe it or not, these this is not the, uh, the headlights. The headlights are actually kind of hidden down here. And they are definitely plenty bright, especially when I drove it uh, home from the delivery center late last night. They did finally incorporate a front camera because considering how large this truck is, it's definitely something that's needed. This is also a special foundation edition. I know it's kind of hard to see, but yep, there's foundation right there. Uh, my guess is that Tesla is only going to deliver foundation series this uh, probably this year for 2024. It does come with something special, like I said, foundation series uh, engravings. You also do get these massive 20 inch rims on 35 inch tires. There are supposed to be some hubcap, uh, some aero covers on here, but apparently Tesla had a little uh, issue with them. So they are not being shipped with them. Um, still just, just kind of waiting on that, but yep, yeah, overall, but that overall they look really good. So and you do have air suspension as well, similar to the Model S and the Model X, but these, as you can see, there's that air cylinder in there. This thing's basically just, it's like an air, uh, air suspension on steroids. And also the, the one thing that everyone seems to always notice is beyond the huge windshield uh, that's on this Cybertruck, the massive windshield wiper that's on this thing. And we're still going, we're still going, we're still going, and there's the end of it. So it's definitely the largest windshield wiper that I've probably seen in a production vehicle. Yeah, let's continue on. So you do have some plastic down here, so make sure you definitely inspect that for any scratches or anything uh, before you take delivery. Also, like I said, I'm gonna point out some flaws of the Cybertruck. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. You can definitely tell that this is this door is misaligned. I uh, I let my service advisor know last night, so I'm definitely planning on taking it in probably later today or tomorrow and just uh, getting the door kind of realigned. To enter the vehicle, it's overall pretty simple. You have these buttons, one on the front and one on the rear. And all you gotta do is just press it and the door does pop out. And just so it's a little more kid friendly, once it opens, you cannot close it. You have to open the door all the way and you'll see that little plunger retract. That's just so kids don't, you know, smash their fingers in this crazy heavy door. Cause that's one thing that I didn't realize when I first, like until I saw the truck and actually experienced it in person, this door is heavy. Like this is the heaviest door I've ever used. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, we'll continue on. So yeah, nice, sleek, just stainless steel overall. So also do be careful uh, the, the the tire black definitely kind of splashed a little bit on the truck. So kind of get used to that until this kind of wears away. I'm definitely going to put something a little bit more permanent on there. Now, coming to the rear, yep, you do have your rear camera because, as you can tell, the tonneau cover is closed. So with the rear view mirror, how do you see? So at least that uh, they kind of thought about that one. So we've got a couple of ways here, uh, a couple of buttons that we are going to utilize. So this is to open the tonneau cover, which this tonneau can support up to 300 pounds, apparently. I have not tested yet, but I've seen some other people, so I do plan on testing that. You can also close the tunnel via this button as well. And this is also for the, you know, the power, I wouldn't say power assist, it's kind of the spring assisted lower tailgate. So with the foundation, it also, it comes with, it came with carpeted floor mats and it also came with uh, all season floor mats, all weather floor mats that, that are currently in the vehicle. So this is also the said cyber truck uh, roof shade, which that will definitely come in handy uh, here in these uh, hot Vegas summers. That's about to hit us, but 
Just kind of throw that off to the side. Other, some other cool features. You also have a nice LED light bar that goes across on both sides. And also, I uh, man, I said race, we forgot it, but uh, this, it also comes with a bottle opener. Please drink responsibly, but yes, you can uh, have a bottle opener. You also have some hooks as well to secure everything. This is a massive six foot bed, so definitely plenty of room to uh, move everything that you need to. And also you have some nice little under storage here as well. And it also does have a drain plug off there to the side so you can use it as a cooler or, or whatever you want. It comes with a front license plate bracket, but we're not gonna use that because I despise front license plates. Uh, Foundation Edition does come with a mobile connector as well. It also is supposed to come with a wall connector, but Tesla was out of them, so I'll get one shipped to me eventually. But yeah, but definitely plenty of storage here. Foundation also did come with these uh, separators as well, but those are easily removable. And also, it's a very, very sturdy uh, truck bed. I remember the original was completely stainless steel, and construction workers ate that thing alive. That was their first complaints, like, hey, we don't want stainless steel, it's just gonna get scratched and wrecked. So it also has some additional tie downs here as well. And also something, you have th three plugs. You have your two 110s and you also have a 240 here as well. So you can, anything from your small appliances or anything like small electronics, all the way up to like, you know, like big power tools. So good on Tesla for that one. These can also be enabled or disabled uh, via the, the home menu that's on the screen. And to, op or to close back up, simple as that. And if you want to close the tunnel, which I'll throw this junk back in here. All I gotta do, just press the button and it closes the tunnel. And once it comes back down, I'll actually kind of knock on it. But as you can tell, like I said, this thing is sturdy. It's, it's definitely not going anywhere. A lot of people are for some reason concerned about rust, that these cyber trucks are rusty. There's no rust on this vehicle. I don't know where that crazy rumor came from, but yeah, just, yeah. But I highly recommend when you do take delivery, just open and close the, like everything, every door, at least I'd say two to three times just to make sure everything, you know, sounds right and everything's copacetic. Oh, we, got, we have visitors. So once again, same thing, just check and make sure that the doors are nice and aligned, thing like that. All right. And you also do have additional cameras here on here as well. A uh, big disappointment right now is this thing doesn't even have autopilot or full self-driving yet. They do say it's coming in a later software update, but I was really hoping this thing is at least shipped with autopilot. Like, come on, Tesla, what are you, what are you doing? And so, of course, another complaint, as you can tell, this isn't, this isn't just completely flush, so I definitely want to uh, make sure that that's flush. So they're going to fix that as well. You have this nice cyber-esque like, kind of mirrors as well. See, everyone loves the Cybertruck. They're coming to check it out, so. Okay. Yeah, see, everyone wants, loves the Cybertruck. Sorry, right. a couple additional features is not only this car has, or this truck, excuse me, has four-wheel steering. So, basically, when I move the steering wheel, assuming I press on the brake, there's your four-wheel steering. It, it, for now, for the time being, it is software locked to only three degrees of travel. Once a software update does come, it's going to be a full 10 degrees. So the turning race is going to be even better, but something this, this is also steer by wire, meaning this steering wheel is not mechanically connected to the wheels at all. It is all just sensors and it senses your input and applies that to the wheels. So overall, it's a, it's a very cool feature. It's that something I never experienced in a vehicle before. I've flown aircraft that are steer by wire, of course, but it's kind of cool to see that come into a vehicle. All right, back to our original broadcasting but yes now we'll get to the interior of the vehicle and yes literally to enter it if this is just one giant button right here all you gotta do is just press and it opens up just like i said and so here we go so you have this nice engraved cyber truck and this is made of i think it's, it's, it's probably plastic or metal i can't really tell but so you do have the, uh something else that comes with the foundation is it's called white decor and i first i'm like oh i'm getting white interior that's pretty sweet but no it's literally just these white panels uh, I have a feeling the non-foundations will just be, you know, like black, which, you know, that's not a big deal. But say if you like this, this nice, beautiful uh, black leather interior, the vegan leather, it also is perforated. So you have heat and cooled seats uh, in the front and just heated in the back with the exception of the center. They decide not to heat the, the center seat, which that was an, an interesting move. But so you do have your uh, stainless steel metal uh, pedals as well. 
Nice, nice uh, plenty of space right there to, to store some stuff. Uh, you can also tell the very unique looking steering wheel, which, you know, Franz and Lars, you know, they're the chief designer and chief engineer for the Cybertruck. They call it a squircle, a.k.a. a square circle. I'm not a fan of that. Or me and Race were talking about that, what to rename this thing. But I'm just going to call it the steering wheel because, yeah, I'm not I'm not calling it a squircle. Yeah, so we'll hop in. I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see. Uh, you do have two phone chargers, wireless charging pads. I'm still not a big fan of charging pads just because, you know, it kind of heats up the phone, I noticed, but it is in a very optimal position. I do like that. You have these nice, very cyber-esque uh, cup holders as well. As you can tell, there's just, there's no curved edges in this vehicle. Everything is very, like, you know, squared off, you know, just to kind of incorporate with the Cybertruck. You have this huge, just massive display here, uh, just here in the center console. I just love just how minimalistic everything is with this. But yeah, this huge, massive display. And also, here's a nice little Easter egg for you. I'll close the truck really fast. But for those of you that watch the premiere, you will recognize this. Yeah, so yeah, so if you watch that in 2019, you remember, like, you know, Franz throwing the steel ball and it broke the glass. So that, that always cracks me up. But yeah, another thing we're going to check out is just look at the size of this dash. Like... Here's my hand, and there's still another two feet left to go at least. Like I can't even reach the the dash. Like this is the biggest dashboard I've ever seen in a vehicle. Uh, but yeah, again, next. Uh, so you, it's hard to tell is daylight, but you do have RGB lighting, which in the in the display you are able to customize the color. It actually goes all the way around, all the way to the back. So that's a very nice touch, uh, especially at night. It just looks really good, and it's overall not. It's not annoying to look at, or it's not. I guess distracting while you drive. You also do have blind, uh, some speakers as well as blind spot monitoring. Uh, a little red light will illuminate when a car is next to you. Uh, normally I'm not a fan of blind spot monitoring because it's so annoying when it just, you know, uh, like blips out of my peripherals, but this is very, it's very good. I, I like it. Uh, getting into the steering wheel. So you finally do have a traditional horn. They got rid of the button, uh, thank God. And also speaking of buttons, these are not haptic feedback. If you remember, for, if you've ever driven a refresh S or an X, so many times, like, you know, as I was test driving one, I would accidentally, you know, hit the uh, the turn signals or I would hit the horn that used to be right here. But now it's literally just physical buttons. Like, let's see if we can hear them. Yeah, so I don't know if you can hear how that sounds, but yes, finally physical buttons. So good on Tesla for that one. Uh, but yeah, so first thoughts of the the steering wheel, very comfortable in the hand. I was very skeptical of this steering wheel at first, but uh, after driving for a little bit, big fan. It just, it fits, it, it works. Yeah, so I, I'm digging it. And so you also do have still some plenty of storage space over here on each side to sell your stuff. Uh, one complaint I do have though, so I'm a big ergonomics kind of guy. Uh, so here's where my arm rests. The Window controls are way back here. They are way too far back. So if I want to like roll my window down, I got to basically just kind of put my elbow all the way in the back just to just to roll down the window. So if I were Tesla, I would move these probably right here instead because there's, you know, it's kind of this open space. I would move this forward just so I can, you know, manipulate the controls just like this without having to like, you know, almost put my arm in the back seat just to, you know, roll down my windows. Uh, so I guess getting a little bit more into the screen, uh, here's the home screen right here, but yeah, you're able to, just, if you're a Tesla owner, you've seen this before, but you will see a couple different things. We do have the overall ride height. Oops, oh, I went to controls, but yes, you can anything from entry to low, medium, high. And if you're in off-road mode, you can put this thing in like even higher, which this thing does go up stupid high. I'll kind of voice this over as I'm like, you know, raising and lowering it. But yeah, you can just see just how high up the Cybertruck can go. I was actually, you know, very surprised. There also is a feature where you can, the second you put it in park, it will actually just default to entry. So it's easier to get in and out of. Uh, other favorite feature of the Cybertruck. And some reason this triggers the heck out of people. And it is this glove box, which I didn't call it a glove box. I call it more a glove drawer. And it does open and close via the touch of a button and this apps people people have come after me for this before because apparently opening and closing a glove box with the touch of a button is lazy it's crazy like i don't 
that's the hill people are willing to die on is uh, this glove box. But uh, let's open it one more time. But yeah, the glove box, lots of room in this uh, you know glove drawer. There also is a USB drive back there as well. And you are able to lock this with a pin so that no, because uh, that's for sentry mode and to store like, you know, some horn sounds or whatever you want. So no, if somebody does somehow break into your cyber truck that they can't get to the, uh, the USB. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna move on to the mirror, which like I said, the mirror is worthless in this truck. One, it's tiny, which, you know, I'm okay with that. But like I said, when the tonneau cover's closed, you can't see out of the back of this thing, but they kind of got you covered there too. So we have our, here's our front camera, which these cameras are very good, very clean. But uh, if you wanna switch, whoops, let's see if we can do this here. All right, and now we switch to the rear camera, which the tailgate's down right now. So of course that's why it's sticking out of the ground. But when the car is put into drive, this uh, rear camera will actually appear uh, on the screen permanently so that you can actually, it acts as a rear view mirror. It's gonna be a bit of a learning curve, uh, but overall it's not bad. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I really do want to take the rear view mirror off just because, especially when I'm filming, like, you know, like driving content, this thing is just in the way and it doesn't need to be there. I know by law it has to be there, but you know, I just want to remove it. Uh, so you've got a nice suede headboard and everything right here just feels very smooth, very soft to the touch. Here's our, you know, sun visors, which, okay, that's another complaint we're going to talk about. So these are magnetic. That's how they're held in place, which, you know, that's cool. But, you know, this windshield is so massive. So say that I want to move this sun visor over to the side. So we're going to do it. It hits me in the head. Like, I know you can't really, you can't really see it. We'll try this, but it hits me in the head. So I literally, if I want to move it to the side, I have to like kind of duck down a little bit and move it off to the side. So that's a little bit annoying, but it's, it's just strange. Then moving back, you do have a, your standard, uh, interior camera as well whenever fsd is enabled someday and autopilot like i said my biggest complaint is this thing didn't even come with you know standard autopilot it's still disabled which you know i was hoping they would have solved that by now but still just waiting on a software update to get me some just some basic autopilot but yep you have uh your different modes and everything uh very uh, special screen just for towing and all that i will tow something eventually as a as a towing test and of course, you know, your standard charge screen. I do like the font of the Cybertruck. It's very, it's very bold. It's different than the other, you know, the sexy lineup. So I, I did like the kind of attention to detail. So you do have your different power outlets as well, and they can be turned on or off from the screen. So everything, oh, sorry, for, I did point out there, forgot to point out, yep, there's some power feed in the front. On the, on the roof for the light bar, if you decide to purchase the light bar, the Cyber Beast is supposed to come with a light bar standard, but I noticed some have not been coming with them. And then you also have some of your various outlets that are there in the trunk. And yeah, I said they can be turned on or off just directly from the screen. So very cool. And same, yep, there are our autopilot. Yep, still full self-driving beta, still disabled. Uh, seeing a full self-driving Cybertruck would be pretty freaking cool. Yep, all this is still pretty standard. Like I said, if you're a Tesla owner, you've seen stuff like this before. But I say if you are new, like I said, I'll maybe I'll, I'll do a completely separate video on the UI and everything on the screen. You said all your standard locks and everything, everything with lights. And this is where you can actually control your RGB lighting. Like I said, it's kind of hard to see, but maybe we can change the color to red. See, so whoops, it's red. Change it kind of purple, blue. We'll change it back to the original color that I had, like that. Yep, standard display, all your trips. Of course, my uh, my energy is out the wazoo just because I have been flooring this thing. Because like I said, for a truck that weighs, like for a truck, this thing is 0 to 60, 4.1 seconds. My Y is 4.8. So the fact that it's, this thing's even faster is insane. So you got your standard navigation, all your safety stuff, sentry mode. And I said service mode. So it does say recommended pressure is 50 PSI for these uh, bad boy tires. And of course, here is our software. It's a nice little sound, uh, Cybertruck logo with the, it said it is the foundation series, which like I said, if I were a gambling man, I would say Tesla is, if you're waiting on a non-foundation, it's going to be 2025 at least. Because, you know, Tesla, like everything that you're getting with the foundation series, like, and for the additional $20,000 markup that they're charging, which I don't know if I would call it a markup, but with all the extra features you're getting for this $20,000, 
why wouldn't Tesla do that? And of course, upgrades don't really have any upgrades yet. Uh, I would love to see a performance boost for this. Maybe something that would take it, you know, maybe from 4.1, maybe down to like a 3.6 or 3.7. You know, that would be pretty cool. I think we covered everything. Oh, so we do have the foundation uh, engraving right there just to kind of show additionally is a foundation. Kind of better look at the seats right here. These definitely, these seats are very comfortable so far. Like I said, until I test them a little bit further, like, you know, drive the, uh, in the seats a little bit more. But yeah, the seats just, they look great. They feel great. You have this very unique kind of gray pinstriping right there. But, uh, ooh, center console. It does come with this, you know, adapter, which this is a dying breed. Eventually this will not be needed anymore, especially as we're switching over to NACS finally uh, in 2025 for all the other slower legacy manufacturers. So you got your little tray here. So you still do definitely have plenty of room for all your stuff here. I think the F-150 still has the biggest center console I've ever seen. I think there's a video of a dude putting a laptop in there, which they said it's overall pretty impressive. And you got your, uh, got an outlet there as well, as well as a USB-C. Close that up. I think we covered everything in the front, but now we'll kind of move to the back, show what's in the back. I said, same concept to get in. And also something nice about these doors is these open up completely 90 degrees. I know some people are a big fan of that. Some aren't for some reason, but all right. So begin in the back seat here. So, so cool thing about it is these seats actually do lift up. There's this little ring right here. And I don't know if I can do this one handed, but oh, we're gonna do it. But yep. Oh, let's raise his backpack. I'll move that real fast. But yep, you can lift up these seats and you have plenty of storage here. Like I said, here's the all-weather floor mats. These do come standard with the foundation. You can uh, purchase these as well. I highly recommend all-weather floor mats. I'm not a big fan of carpets because it looks absolutely filthy. And then to put it down, you just pull the ring and it just it just comes right down. But, all right, but here's my driving position from where I sit. And as you can see, I'm six foot three, plenty of room. Knees aren't even close. I got at least a fist worth. But yeah, there's definitely plenty of room back here. So we do also have our rear screen here as well, but we'll kind of show off this glass first. Nice solid piece of glass and is tinted as well. And it, uh, the foundation does come with the roof shade, which I might put up here as it starts to get a little bit warmer, but yeah. Overall, just beautiful view, just beautiful view. We have our rear screen here as well, which this can be locked from the front because apparently, yes, you can move the, uh... if I can do it, maybe. Oh, moving the air vents. Yeah, you can move the air vents, and these also, you can move them by hand. Very cool feature with Tesla. It's basically air moving air. It's 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 crazy. But yeah, going to some of our different settings. Yep, like I said, heated seats only in the back, and they are only the sides, like the, not the center. The center is not heated, which I have a feeling, you know, Tesla decided like, well, nobody uses that, so we're not going to include it, because, you know, Tesla, the best part is no part, I guess. And so you can also watch like, you know, your Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, Twitch, no Disney plus. We're not even going to talk about why Disney plus is not available anymore. And turn power on and off. But yeah, this is a nice little touch with the, I like, I do like the rear screen. It's, it's, it's very cool. So closing the door. So overall, just the cabin's very quiet. So the doors closed, extremely quiet. Something I forgot to point out too is, uh, so these, our lights up here, these aren't buttons. It's haptic feedback. Nice LED lighting, so just very nice touch. Do have some additional lighting that's a, that's up here. Here's your little spot for your uh, for your coats or anything like that. And this is also haptic feedback. So yeah, definitely a lot of attention to detail went into this truck. The production, that's a whole different story. And then to exit, same concept, you just uh, press on the button here to exit. You've got some uh, storage space here as well. You can put a water bottle or anything right here. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm kind of winging this video because I'm in, still in shock that this thing is mine. It's still crazy. Like, you know, I placed a order for this thing on the day, the minute you could. So 21 November, 2019. And, you know, almost four and a half years later, finally taking delivery. But what I would love to see from Tesla in the future is, you know, delivery start the year after. I would love to see that eventually. Yep, Xing, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's everything for the exterior and the interior, but yeah, just to kind of kind of a quick recap of just some things that you should look for when you take delivery. Like I said, biggest things, 
Look for like really deep scratches on the exterior. Look for alignments because as you can tell, I can see how this one is kind of like nice and flush, but on the other side, it's not. Look on your plastics. Make sure none of this plastic is scratched. Big thing, door alignment, because I don't know if you can tell, but as you can see, the door kind of pops out a little bit, which to them, I think that's a simple fix, but like why it left the factory like that, I don't know. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I caught it last night. Like I, if I were them, when it showed up, I would have just fixed it then and there, but said whatever. But I'll show you, just make sure some other things that we're looking at. Yeah, just make sure you're looking for deep scratches, big alignment issues. Like I was talking here, see how this is kind of just a little bit higher. Same thing, alignment issues. And no, this, these aren't scratches. Like I said, this is tire black from the tires. It literally just sprayed all over the car. What else are we looking for here? Yeah, I think this side. Yeah, just see, it's slightly higher than the other one. So maybe an easy fix. Maybe not. We'll see. Like I said, open up every door two, three times just to make sure everything sounds good and just make sure everything, you know, feels good, including the tonneau cover and the tailgate cover or the tailgate cover. I don't know why I said that, but, but yeah, like I said, is Tesla perfect? No. Are they getting there? Absolutely. They're definitely bumping up production. They're ramping it up like crazy. And hopefully we'll see a lot more of these things in the future, but yep. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. He's trying to get out of the picture, but I see you over there. Uh, so yeah, give it a thumbs up if you're new, subscribe. Follow me on X, TikTok, you know, the whole nine yards. But yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. See ya.